In this video, I will show you how to create a Google Tag Manager account and container. And I will also give you a brief overview of Google Tag Manager interface. Hey, my name is Julius and this is Analytics Mania, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. In this quick video, I will show you how to create a Google Tag Manager container and the main parts of the Google Tag Manager interface. This video is the second lesson in the video series where I teach beginners how to start with Google Tag Manager. If you have missed the previous lesson, check the description of this video. By the way, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager as a beginner, I have a free ebook for that. So check the link below the video where you can get this ebook for free. And in the meantime, let's create a Google Tag Manager account. In your browser, go to google.com slash tag manager and you will see something like this. This page is constantly being changed. So there is a chance that you will see something different, but you should be looking for a button that says sign up, create an account or something like that. In this case, I see a button right here, start for free. So you click that one and then you will need to sign up. So in order to start using Google Tag Manager, you will need to have a Google account. That might be the same account that you're using for your Gmail, Google ads and other Google products. So once you click this button, complete all the necessary steps and you will see something like this. You will see this view if you are totally new to Google Tag Manager and you might see something like this if you have used Google Tag Manager at any time in the past. So if you have created a Google Tag Manager account at least once in the past, click this button. And if you are totally new, you will just see this view. So let's create an account and then we will set up a container. And I will later explain what do these things mean. So first you can enter your account name. Usually I enter a business name. So if you're working for your own company, that could be your company name. If you are working for a client, that could be your client's name. If a business has multiple websites, but they all operate under the same business, you should still enter the business name in the account name field. So for demonstration purposes, I will enter something like GTM course, then choose your country. So we can keep it as United States for this course, but if you want, you can choose your own country and then the container. So the container is the place where you will keep all your tracking codes. So, so if in the future you will be working on two or three websites, each website can have its own container, but also multiple websites can use the same container. And I will explain later what is the difference. And in this part, it is not necessary to enter the address. You can just enter the name of the website, like main website, support website, blog, or something else. So in this case, I can just enter demo container. In this course, we will be focusing only on web tracking. So you should choose the target platform web and click create. Then you will need to agree with terms of service. And that's it. Now you have created your Google Tag Manager account and container. Uh, Google Tag Manager will immediately ask you to add these codes to your website. For now, let's close this window. We will come back to it a bit later. Before we continue, first, let's take a look at the structure of the account and what do all these different things mean. So when you have logged into Google Tag Manager, you have used your Google account. This is your email address that you use to log into your Google Ads, Google Analytics, Gmail, YouTube, or anywhere else. Then what we have done is that we have created a Google Tag Manager account. And under the same email, under the same Google account, you can have multiple Google Tag Manager accounts. And as I've mentioned, the best practice is to have one account per business. So if you are, for example, an agency and you are working with multiple clients, each client should have a different Google Tag Manager account. And then in that account, we have a container. So for example, if you're working with, let's say three different websites that belong to the same business and those websites are quite different, the best practice would be to create a separate container for each website. Let's take a look at Google Tag Manager's interface. So at the top of the screen, you see three main sections, workspace, versions, and admin. You will be spending most of your time in the workspace because that's where all the work actually happens. You will keep your tracking codes in the tags section. You will keep your conditions when those tags fire in the triggering section. And in variables section, you will keep your various data points and all the small functions that are being used in tags and triggers. So once you implement all the changes in the workspace, you will be able to preview them 
on your actual website. And if you're happy with them, you will be able to submit. So this means that you will need to publish your changes and those changes will then be available to your visitors. So if you add a Facebook pixel and submit Facebook pixel, then uh, the pixel will start tracking your website visitors. Every time you submit a container, you actually create a new version of that container and all the versions will be visible right here. Right now we have no published versions because we have just created the container, but in the future, the list of versions might look like this. And the main benefit of versions is that if something goes wrong, for example, if you publish something and that tracking code is breaking the functionality of your website, or maybe it is tracking some incorrect data, you will be able to quickly revert your changes. So if you want to quickly roll back and publish the previous version, you can just choose the previous version, click on three dots, and then click publish to then choose the environment live website and then publish now. So in this case, if something goes wrong, you will be able to quickly mitigate the issue on your live website and then without any rush to fix all the issues and then publish a new version. And the third section in the top menu is the admin. This looks quite similar to the admin section of Google Analytics. Here are the admin settings of the account. This is Google Tag Manager account and these are the settings of the container. So you can change on the account level things like the account name, you can enable two-step authorization process, then you can control users, you can manage users on the account level, but also you can restrict access to a certain user just on the uh, container level. So here is the user management of the container. And then you can also see the activity of users on the account level and on the container level. If you want to get the container JavaScript code that needs to be installed on a page, you can go to install Google Tag Manager and you will see two codes that Google requires you to add to a website. Then you can also export the container and import the container. So for example, if you want to uh, copy a container with all the tags, triggers, and variables, this is fairly easy because you can just export the container. It will actually generate a file uh, that you can later import in another empty container. And then all the contents of that file will be also in that new container. There are several other items, but right now the most important were these ones. And that was a quick overview of Google Tag Manager interface. If you found it useful, I would really appreciate if you click the thumbs up button because it helps me continue working on this channel. If you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager as a beginner, download my free ebook. You will find the link to that in the description of this video. Also, do not forget that this video is the part two of video series where I teach beginners how to get started with Google Tag Manager. You will find the links to other videos, I mean other lessons, in the description as well. Last but not least, if you want to get more useful Google Tag Manager tips in the future, consider subscribing. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I will see you in the next video.